This is a Pinewood Derby car. It comes in a kit, then you build it and put it together, and then it uses gravity to go down a track. Now this is a much faster Pinewood Derby car. Oh wait, this was my entry. I was disqualified because apparently using jet propulsion goes against the spirit of the competition. This is a much faster legal car. But what is it about this one that makes it so much faster than this one? Really, is it the wheels? Is it the weight placement? Is it the axles? And of the design features that influence speed, which one of those is the most important? For example, do aerodynamics really play a role? So today, we're going to use cold hard science to figure out how you can maximize your chance of taking home the trophy with the least amount of effort. So let's start with the fundamentals. The Pinewood Derby is all about conservation of energy. The amount of energy you start the race with is the same amount of energy you end the race with. It's just a different kind. So each of these blocks represents a unit of energy. So at the beginning of the race, it's all potential energy, which is the energy associated with height. So when you start, the higher your center of mass is on the track, the more of it you have. And then at the end of the race, in a perfect world, all that potential energy has been converted to kinetic energy, block for block. And kinetic energy is the energy of speed. So you were really high on the track, and as you came down, all that height was converted into speed. And you notice I said in a perfect world, because in reality, we lose some of that kinetic energy to friction. It's dissipated through heat. But you will notice that these two piles of friction and kinetic energy still add up to the original potential energy we started with. Energy is conserved. So if you can reduce friction, that means you're going to have more kinetic energy. And that is the key. This pile is the key to winning the race, because it has the speed term in there. And whoever has the higher pile of blocks here wins the race every time. So for the rest of this video, we're going to discuss what truly matters in maximizing your kinetic energy, or your speed, or this pile. How do you make this pile as big as possible with the least amount of effort? Okay, so before we go any further, I want to introduce you to someone I met while doing the research for building the perfect Pinewood Derby car. My name is Scott Acton, and I'm a physicist for Ball Aerospace. About 10 years ago, my son and I kicked my wife's car out of the garage, and we converted it into the Pinewood Derby Research Facility. So the first thing you should notice is by far the biggest contributor to increasing the speed of your car is maxing out the weight of your car at five ounces and then putting it in the right location towards the rear of the car. So that alone contributes to 36% of the speed of your car. And you would beat a car that had the worst possible mass placement location at the very front of the car by almost five car lengths if everything else was identical between your two cars. So why is this? Well, if you put all your weight toward the back of the car like this, when you're sitting on the track before you even start, your center of mass is higher up than if the weight was concentrated at the front of the car. That means you automatically start with more potential energy. And since energy is conserved and we added two blocks here, we have to add two blocks on the other side of the equation, which means you get more kinetic energy. And again, that's the energy of speed, which means you're going faster when you get to the bottom of the ramp. So another way to look at it is to say both cars will roll down the ramp at the same speed until they get to the bottom. Now at this point, the blue car is done accelerating, but the red car has all the mass at the back and is still falling and will continue to be pushed forward, sort of giving it a turbo boost when it gets to the flat part. So let's quickly run through the remaining list of the critical parameters. Lightweight in the wheels can give you a two car length lead, everything else being equal. So if your race rules allow it, you need to take as much weight off this wheel as possible, especially the outer edge. Now to explain why this matters, let's go back to our blocks. I didn't tell you the full story when it comes to kinetic energy. So remember, this is the energy of motion, and when you cross the finish line, technically you have two types of motion. Your car is translating, but the wheels are also rotating about the axis. Now that gives us rotational kinetic energy. Now this green pile of translating kinetic energy is still the most important, because that represents your car's speed. And this orange pile of the spinning wheels actually takes away from that. So if we can minimize the moment of inertia on each of the wheels by making it as light as possible around the edge, that means more of our initial potential energy will go into making our car go fast and not just spinning up the wheels with a lot of energy. So when you high center at the end, the wheels are just spinning forever. That's energy we could have used to make our car go fast. So the most streamlined Pinewood Derby car is going to beat a normal block of wood by about 1.4 car lengths if everything else is equal. Now going back to our blocks, when you're not very aerodynamic, it's basically just a form of friction. So essentially the more streamlined your profile is, 
the fewer air molecules you basically have to push out of the way. So while you don't have to kill yourself here, making some attempt to make the car a little bit more streamlined than the standard block is going to be worth it. So using polished axles will beat normal axles by about 1.3 car lengths, everything else being equal. So lifting one wheel on your car so your car is only riding on three wheels will beat a four-wheeled car by about 1.1 car lengths, everything else being equal. And most people say, oh, with one less wheel, that's one-fourth the friction. But for the reasons we talked about, that's not true because each wheel just has more weight on it. Now, the real reason this actually helps goes back to our rotational kinetic energy. Now, remember, the green pile is what you want to maximize. And if you have one less wheel to get spinning as you start going down the ramp, that means that energy gets to go to our kinetic energy of translation, which means a faster velocity at the finish line. And finally, adding graphite to your wheels and axles will make your car win by about 0.9 car lengths. Everything else being equal gets the car that has no graphite. Now, there are several really expensive graphite solutions out there, but all the experts I talked to basically said, Graphite's graphite, that's clever marketing. Our independent tests show that there's really no appreciable difference between one versus another. So there's a number of other parameters Dr. Acton discusses in his videos, but those six are the ones that will have the biggest impact relative to the time you spend on your car. So remember, aerodynamics are important, but there's no need to totally kill yourself on it. Just a simple reduced shape is good. Okay, so the next step, polishing the axles. Here's a before and after. Basically, you just want to take your axle, put in a drill press or even a hand drill and duct tape down the trigger. And then you just take different levels of sandpaper and just dip them in water and, and put it on the nail. You, you go all the way from you know 600 to 2000 grit. The last step should be some sort of polishing compound. And then I went ahead and marked the 12 o'clock position on the nail head, and this is why. So in doing research and talking with a bunch of experts, I actually found two things that Dr. Acton didn't test. These are the concept of rail riding and the concept of bending your axles so your wheels are canted. So let's start with bending the axles. So to bend the axles, I use this bending tool from Derby Works. So right there, you just bent the nail, then you take it out of the clamp, and then you have an uh, axle that's bent at exactly 2.5 degrees. So bent axles are important for two reasons. The first is that it reduces friction. And this is because as you roll down the track, the way the axles are bent, the wheels want to migrate outwards. And that's good because it reduces friction in the sense that the part that's rubbing is the wheel and the nail head, which has a much lower coefficient of friction than if the wheel's just bouncing around and rubbing against the wooden body of the car. The second reason they're really important is it makes alignment a hundred times easier. And now because we want our car to only ride on three wheels, I deepen one side of the pre-cut axle groove in the front. And now because it's deeper, that front left wheel won't touch the ground. So this is where it leaves us at. The front left wheel is raised up off the ground. You can see the back two wheels are canted outwards, but you notice the front wheel is actually canted the opposite direction. Now this is the other thing Dr. Acton didn't look at, but it was called the rail riding technique. Now rail riding means you intentionally steer your car into the rail that runs down the track and guides your car. Now that sounds crazy, like it's totally going to increase your friction, and a lot of experts recommend spending hours and hours on aligning your car so it runs perfectly straight. So the problem with that is no track has a perfect surface, so even the perfectly aligned car is going to bounce around on the track. So these bounces are incredibly detrimental because with each impact, you're taking some of your kinetic energy and it's being converted to friction and heat. And again, kinetic energy in this pile are the key to winning the race. So here's how you set up the rail rider. So get yourself a nice flat board that's about four to six feet long and your car should veer about one inch toward the side that has the wheel raised over the length of that board. So in this case, it veered too much. And this is the genius of the bent axles. Because to change direction, we don't have to shim or glue. All you do is twist the nail head. It doesn't take much. And then once I did that, it was just about right. Okay, so in summary, I recommend maximizing the weight of your car at five ounces and placing it in the correct spot on the car, about an inch in front of the rear axles. Have a reasonably aerodynamic car and have it right on three wheels. Lightweight those wheels if your race rules allow it. And then get the bent polished axle so you could reduce your friction, make it a lot easier to align, and you can implement the rail riding technique. And then just run your rail rider alignment test and make sure you use plenty of graphite. So above all, I hope you guys have fun and you use this as an opportunity to get excited about science and physics. And then you use that to turn around and just dominate every other car in the race.